Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 25th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I want to talk about some issues related to the transition from Northern Hemisphere summer to Northern Hemisphere fall. And when we think about this trend transition, it's important to also remind ourselves that even though we're transitioning to a cooler time of the year seasonally, and we see seasonal cooling during fall, that also just because the angle of the earth is changing and the amount of sunlight hitting this portion of the globe is changing, and we are heading toward a cooling pattern, it doesn't mean that the impacts of human-caused climate change go away simply because we are entering the cool season. And in some respects, some of the attributes of human-caused climate change become more apparent during fall and winter and spring, despite the fact that these are cooler seasons in summer. Now, one of the attributes of human-caused climate change that tends to start to ramp up during fall, and it's worth noting that we are about three days into fall now, is an aspect of human-caused climate change called polar amplification, in which the pole warms faster relative to the rest of the world due to the uneven heating effects or I guess you could say the more, more even heating effects of greenhouse gases, which are amplified during periods of darkness. And the pole right now is transitioning from a period of 24 hour sunlight that occurs during summer to, toward, a, a transit, a, to a, toward a period of, of 24 hour darkness called polar night. Now we're not in polar night yet, but the, the periods of darkness are lengthening. The angle of sunlight that does fall on the Arctic right now is lessening. And so as this occurs, the impact of heat trapping gases such as carbon dioxide increase ironically. And, and also as this occurs, we, we start to see some of the energy transfer mechanisms set in place by various physical changes, such as loss of sea ice, which tends to result in, in avenues for energy transfer and heat transfer into the Arctic during fall, winter, and spring. So with this in mind, I'd just like to point out some features of the present climate system as it relates to potential energy transfer pathways into the Arctic as we get into fall and winter. And this map that we're looking at now is a change in sea surface temperature anomalies from September 19th to August, um, I'm sorry, from August 22nd to September 19th. And what we see is that the region of the North Pacific, the, the North Central and, and down into the Central Latitudes is warming up relative to typical climate trends. And this is an indication that the Pacific Ocean is maybe prepping itself for a big energy transfer into the Arctic through both the Bering and the Chukchi Sea and over Alaska during this fall and possibly into winter. Now, looking at sea surface temperature anomalies at present, there is a quite extreme set of sea surface temperature anomalies running in through the Bering Sea and up into the Chukchi Sea in the range of about three to four and a half degrees Celsius, with the central northern Pacific showing sea surface temperature anomalies in the range of two to possibly as high as, as 3.7 degrees Celsius above average. Overall, the North Pacific is much warmer than normal from east to west and west to east with a slight cool pool in the middle latitudes just north of, of Hawaii and ranging from the U.S. West Coast out into the Central Pacific Ocean. Overall, 
these warmer than normal waters would tend to provide an atmospheric impetus, impetus for high amplitude jet stream waves running in through this region and strong ridge patterns running in through the bearing over Alaska, potentially over the US West Coast and potentially over Siberia, the Siberian region adjacent to Alaska and the Bering Sea. So, so a bit of a, a, a preparation for the fall and winter season when it comes to the potential for extreme jet stream patterns. And what we are seeing at this time is a, is a prevailing ridge pattern that tends to dominate near the Alaska region and near the Pacific Northwest. And, and this is a, a jet stream map for September 25th. I'm gonna go ahead and advance the forecast for a few days so you can see the trends. And this ridge pattern in the West tends to generate prevailing warm or warmer than normal conditions as well as drier than normal conditions over the US West and the Pacific Northwest and also tends to generate a countervailing trough toward the central US and toward the East. So I'm just going to go ahead and advance this map. We got about three and a half minutes left so so that you can see what the present trends are for the jet stream. So by the 26th we see the ridge building through the Pacific Northwest and up toward Alaska, encompassing much of the Western US with the trough encompassing the central US and dipping, dipping a little bit toward the east. By the 27th, we see a large bow appearing as the ridge pushes more toward the Bering Sea and the, the countervailing trough tends to deepen toward the Great Lakes region. And by the 28th, the trough in the east deepens further with a likely stormy pattern over the northeast and the central US, while the ridge tends to back up over the Bering Sea and further into Alaska. With a final bowing out over the Chukchi Sea region by the 29th, likely resulting in above normal temperatures invading both Alaska and the Chukchi Sea during this time as the trough pattern remains over the northern, central, and eastern U.S., as well as the Hudson Bay region of Canada. So if these prevailing patterns continue through fall and into winter, we would tend to expect much warmer than normal temperatures in the west, cool temperatures and stormy conditions in the east, and quite a lot of ener energy transfer into the Arctic through Alaska and the Bering and Chukchi Sea. So definitely a pattern to keep an eye on as we get more and more into fall. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.